so we get this so we get this um, mechanism going on and on and on and on but it's very very quickly from the mouth to the stomach guess how long it takes seconds yeah literally seconds so this mechanism just quick keeps going choop, 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 choop. When, if, when, when, I'm, when I'm looking at it, it, um, it makes me think this will take forever. But actually, but 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 then but then but then when we were talking about the the mouth and the enzymes, I it looks as though it will take forever, but it does not take forever. Yeah, you know, it takes a matter of seconds. Yeah, and do you remember when you're tasting things, you go, oh yeah, taste buds. Yep, that's blood. This. Even when you're waiting for the enzymes, like you say, you know, for the enzyme to break down the food, yeah, it's quickly like that. So we've swallowed our bolus here, and it comes down. The epiglottis does its job. Eosis. <clears throat> yeah, well done. Yeah, comes down. The epiglottis does its job. Eosis. So the food enters the esophagus there. And we have this motion quickly just going squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Oh, squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. Or contract, relax, contract, relax, relax. So that's really making yes. more time. Like the thing. Like the thing that you drew. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. And that is called peristalsis. Do you want to know that word? Peristalsis. Dow sis. Peri No. Peri. 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 Yes. And all it means is that this is what's happening. That contraction of the circular muscles and then release, contract, release, contract, release. Oh, so you mean contract, release, contract, full, release. Yeah. Contract. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then until it gets to okay, this is our sofa. I don't want to get too down below. Do you know what this could be? Is that the stomach? Yep. Do you know the parts of the stomach? I know you have one stomach and cows and flake four. Yeah. Oh, well, I do. yeah, good. Yeah, we do. Um, but the parts of the stomach, well, anyhow, the parts of the stomach start at the entrance there. Okay. Oh, one other thing that you need to know is that at the beginning of the esophagus, we have something called a sphincter which can close when we're not eating so that food doesn't get into the stomach what do you think would happen if you kept swallowing air and air just kept or if air was just literally just moving into your stomach all the time um something unpleasant i'm guessing yes <laughs> a lot of unpleasant things would be happening so Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened? What? Well, your, your tummy might be grumbling a lot. Your tummy would feel full and distended and it could be painful to just have a tummy that feels like it's being stretched all the time. And that air will need to come out somehow so you could either be belching all the time. Oh, oh that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, oh, to try and get it. Oh, oh, the, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. The... Farting. Gut. Yep. <laughs> Ripping but Oh, there's so many names. Why are there so many names for the simple fart? I know. Oh, so what did you say? The, the computer sort of froze a bit. What did you say? Why are there so many names for the simple fart? Well, because I think people are trying to find a, a list disgusting or a more acceptable word. Fart isn't disgusting, it's a sensible word. I know, but you know, as human beings, we always try to make things a little bit, you know. Culture. Yeah. I've heard it in, I've heard it in a book. 
yeah um so then we have that there to stop you know air going in and out all the time and then we also have another mechanism there to control food entry into the stomach and we just really call it in by an easy name it's just called a lower Is it a lower epiglottis? No, lower esophageal sphincter. How is that an easy name? <laughs> well, because it uses the word lower and esophageal, which is an esophagus and the sphincter. How am I supposed? I don't even know how to spell half of that stuff. Okay, leave it because at the moment, remember, we were just calling things exactly by what they are called in order to know where things are. And then we'll break it down and learn it again, yeah. Okay, is it, is it okay if you just give me a simple name? Um, well, we can think of it as a muscular... Muscle ring. I'm yeah, a ring. muscle ring, yeah. That's, that um, controls food entry into the stomach. Does that make sense? Muscle ring or, or food control. Yeah, muscle it's like a tap, a tap really. If you have a tap and you open it, water can come out, and if you close it, water can't. can't. Or if you're having a bath, you have a stopper, haven't you? Oh yes. Yeah. To make sure that the water does not go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more like that. But these are obviously the proper names for things. Because when you are starting to learn things, it's important to learn the proper names and then break it down and use your own words, yeah? <coughs> I am very sorry for that guy. He must have, a, he must have an awful condition. We need, to, we need to get Mr. Skelly. Mr. Skelly so he can show. Well, Mr. Skeleton doesn't really have a way to show the osophagus because Mr. Skeleton is the skeleton, literally. And these are muscles. I know. Yeah. I'm saying we could we could actually we could look at him to see to see what what it might actually what um we could just look at him to see what um, what it what where it could act when it where it would be in theory. Okay. So you run there. In real life, okay, you're also focused like obviously that's the back of the throat there where was where the where the top of the pencil tip is. So then you're also focused. All the way down to right. Yeah, yeah, right. passing through. So if, if you think about it, your trachea belongs into this part, yeah. the rib cage. But your stomach has to pass through all of that. And there is a muscle under there, which is called the diaphragm. And the oh, osophagus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, have you heard of that? Yes, I have. Yeah, so the osophagus actually goes through the diaphragm. To enter this cavity here called the abdominal cavity where the stomach leaves. Okay. Abdominal. abdominal is about the size of your fist. Yeah. That Yeah. So uh, it's it's hard to hold Mr. Skeleton. But does that make sense? Yes. So if you have um I'm trying to find a little thing. Let me use one of my articles. No, let me use. Ooh, have I dropped? Oh, I dropped this down. Aha! What about this? Okay, so how small it is. So, look. So this this is your. Okay, let me first of all put Mr. Mr. Skeleton out there. So this is your diaphragm and it's used for breathing. So it separates the two cavities and it sits under there. Oh, if I can place it in there, under there. Uh, sometimes so it's, there was... So it's around here somewhere. Hang on, we'll get there, don't we? So yeah, it sits like that. 
And if the red bit is your also focus, so can you see where it's sitting there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if the red bit, can, and can you see the diaphragm then separates your lungs and all your breathing organs from your digestive organs, which yes. are there at the bottom where my little fingers, where my fingers are, where my little finger is. So this little bit there where my little finger is is called the abdominal cavity. Abdominal. Abdom. Ad, ad, abdominal. Yeah, like your abdomen. Your stomach is called it. The area is called the abdomen. You know that, don't you? Ah, I knew that it was short for something. But when you said abdom abdominal, I was thinking of abdominal, 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 abdominal stomach. Oh, okay. But anywho, it's called anyhow. It's called the abdominal cavity, and at the back, at, at the top there where the rib cage is, is called the thoracic cavity, and that's where your breathing organs live. At the moment, we're not doing that. We're just focusing on the abdominal cavity, which is below the diaphragm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... So, okay, so back to that. Huh? Yeah. So now you're at the stomach. So, the well, stomach. perhaps it's important for us to just put the... What do you think that is? Diaphragm? Yeah. So this is our diaphragm there. Can you see that color? It's a bit dry. I can see the diaphragm, but I can't see the writing. Oh, and now you can see the writing. Can you? Do you want me to rewrite? Oh, okay with it. Okay. So the diaphragm separates Oh, this is dry as well. All my pens are drying out. But my pens are great. <laughs> yeah, they, so it separates the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. Okay. And... Can you see all of that? It separates the uh, um, the what is it that one? say? So I can see abdominal cavity, but I can thoracic thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity. Yeah. So. Now, have you noticed that we had a mouth, which is a cavity? It's three cavities. Then we have this bit, which is the thoracic cavity. And then we have this bit, which is the abdominal cavity. Yeah. So, yeah. Upper, upper? Yeah. Like kind of like the middle? Yeah. The bottom? Yeah. So... That's the whole, whole cell. Yeah. So... Uh, digestive organs, the main ones, are contained in the abdominal cavity. But of course, the oesophagus passes through the thoracic cavity and the mouth obviously is in the mouth cavity. Oh, well, the mouth actually is the mouth cavity. Yeah, the mouth is the mouth cavity. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's really good. Yeah, so I was just trying to find a way of making it as clear as possible. That as clear as possible would be said there are there is a cavity. Mm -hmm. The mouth mm -hmm. one cavity. Yeah. The esophagus, which is, or, and then the muscle tube goes through another cavity called yeah. the thoracic cavity. Yeah. But you can call it the that actually that thoracic. That that kind of sounds like thoracic. Oh, okay, but thoracic, let's call it thoracic, yeah. Yes, the thoracic, then it goes through the thoracic 
the thoracic cavity. Mm -hmm. And then there is another cavity called the abdominal cavity, mm -hmm. which has most of your digestive organs. Well done, yeah. Well done, and you've said it in your own words, which is the most important thing, you know, because in order for you to understand stuff, because all these words, you know, these are the proper anatomical words, so it's important for you to sort of be able to place things where they where they are using your own words. Do you remember about talking about our own words? But of course, sometimes with with science subjects, you do need to include the actual names. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So now we are in the abdominal cavity, where we find the stomach, and the stomach is. Yeah, <clears throat> the stomach is a muscle, as I'm sure you know. There are two. There are two way too way too many muscles in this digestion. <laughs> I know. Way too many. Everything is more or less a muscle. You can't be. You can't sort of escape muscles. So again, it has longitudinal muscles, circular muscles, and oblique muscles. It also has acid. Yes, no, that is the function. At the moment, we are talking about what it is, what it looks like, isn't it? Structure, and then we add function and work. Yeah. Yeah, Science. okay. Yeah, tell okay, me about the stomach. Your fist, please. Hmm? Clench your fist. Yeah. That is about the size of your stomach. Mm. If, it, if it has absolutely no food in it, that's about the size of your stomach. Mm. 